Hey everybody, I'm Michael from Michael Strong Rubber Stamps. Are you looking for a new way to show your sweetheart just how much you care? Well, I think I've got just the project for you. Stick around with me for the next few minutes and I'm gonna show you a project that's overflowing with hearts and love. Today we're going to be making this intricate interlocking envelope and an elegant matching card that goes inside. And I want to show you how we're going to do that. So let's get started by making the envelope. To make the envelope, you're going to need an eight and a half by eight and a half inch square piece of cardstock. This is just an 11 by eight and a half, which I cut down. So uh, it's important for you to do these first two folds and make them pretty precise. Now I'm lining up the points, as you can see here kind of diagonally and folding that down. I'm going to open this up and we're going to do the same thing to the other two points. Put the two points together and then crease down the center. What you end up with is a card that has this big X right in the middle. So the next step is to take a marker and put a little dot right in the center of that X. That's going to be our guide for the next folding step. So you take the point, and we're going to fold the point right up to that dot. We still want to see the dot because we have three more folds to do. So there's the first one. There's the second one. Just keep folding them down. Here's the third one. And one more to complete the envelope. All right. Now this is kind of nice, but it's pretty plain. So what I want to do is use my rubber stamp here. This is from the Michael Strong Cloisonne collection. This is the Cloisonne heart. And we're going to stamp some hearts out and put them on the envelope to make the uh, interlocking aspect of that. So I want to show you how to do the um, embossing on that. Just ink up your stamp. And we'll stamp it right onto this cream colored cardstock. Give it a good press so all the little intricate designs will show. Now we're going to pour some gold uh, embossing powder on top of this. I'm just going to slip this sheet underneath to catch the extra powder. Pour it on and shake off the extra. All right. I think this is the thing that gets people really interested in rubber stamping. It's the um, embossing process because it's so dramatic. And you'll be able to see the transformation pretty quickly. It goes from a kind of a matte finish to a shiny gold. Make sure you don't burn your fingers because it gets pretty hot. So that's how that looks. Now for the envelope, we're going to need five of those actually. And I've done some here as you can see. Four. Five, and then we'll need one also done on red cardstock. That's going to be for the card on the inside, so I'll put that aside for now. And what you'll want to do is flip over your envelope and apply a piece of red cardstock to the back. And this is um, measures five and seven eighths inches by five and seven eighths inches. And what this is going to accomplish is covering up those crease lines, which we really don't want to see. So just cover that up. And then you'll, you'll be gluing one of those cream color hearts to the back. All right, that's the back. All right, now for the opening mechanism, what we're going to do is open up the envelope like this. And we're going to glue one heart to each point here. Now, it's kind of important for you to remember not to glue the whole thing down because part of the heart is going to act as the interlocking mechanism. So we only want to do a little bit, so that would be half of the heart, roughly. So I'm going to turn it over and just put a little glue stick on half. And you're going to adhere it to the envelope, leaving just a tiny little diamond at the top. You can see that little red part right here. That's what you want to show. You can line up the point of the heart with um, the, point, the, uh, the crease that we have here. So you're going to do that all the way around. All right, one more. Now this 
looks fairly intricate, but as you can see, it was very simple to make. Now for the inside, we need to cover up that little dot that we made. So instead of a red piece of cardstock, I'm putting this cream color piece in, and it's the same size, five and seven eighths inches square. Now I'm not gonna do the mechanism, the interlocking part quite yet, because I want to show you how to make the card that goes on the inside, so we'll just set that aside. Now for the card, I have a five and a half inch square card that opens from the side, it looks like that. And then I have this piece of um, cardstock, it's two pieces layered together. It's a shiny gold cardstock and then the cream color on top. And we're going to put that into the middle of this card. And you'll notice that I have um, uh, put some foam mounting tape on the back. Uh, I always like to do this when I layer the same colors together, like these two cream colors together. What it does is create a little shadow between the layers, and it helps pop that up a little bit. I think you can kind of see how that shadow differentiates it from the rest of the card. So to finish this card, we're going to use the heart again, only this time I stamped it onto red cardstock. So you have this nice shiny gold on the red, but um, I need to gild the lily just a little bit more than that. So I'm going to carve out some of this intricate pattern that you see here. And for that, I'm going to um, bring my cutting mat over. And I have this really cool craft knife, and it's called a fingertip control craft knife by Fiskars. And you just insert your finger, and it's a very natural, almost like a writing feel. It's very um, comfortable in the hand. So I'll show you how that works. Simply cut away the parts that you want to make into a window. We'll call it a window. I'll do a couple more here just to show you. And this really is um, easy to use. If you've ever used a regular craft knife, a lot of people are a little bit intimidated by craft knives because sometimes they slip out of your hand and, and I've been cut on more than one occasion, believe me. But this one is not going anywhere. I mean, it's really comfortable for me to hold. All right, so just a little bit more here and we'll lift out that little section that I just cut. All right, now I'm going to um, take this heart and we're going to mount it on top of the card that you see here. But I want a little shadow to show underneath. So before I put it down, I'm gonna adhere it with a little more foam tape. And this will just pop it up, and create that shadow layer. Now I'll just put a couple of pieces on, but when you do this at home, you'll wanna make sure that it's really adhered well, so put a few more on. This will give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. All right, how about that? Pretty romantic, huh? <laughs> I like it a lot. So uh, I'm going to bring in the one that we completed before just to show you how it all looks together and how the mechanism works, the interlocking heart part. So here's the card that goes on the inside. And then you're going to fold the pieces down over each other. And the, the design has a small heart on one side. So you want to have that heart exposed on each of the ones that are showing. So we're going to slip this in underneath that heart and this one underneath that heart. It's kind of an over under over under idea and this one goes underneath that heart and then you can press it down and that's the completed look. I think it's pretty special. I think if your Valentine got this they'd be very impressed. So here's one that's uh, a wedding invitation variation and you can see that the hearts look quite different than the Valentine's card. The way we accomplish that is we emboss the heart onto white cardstock. It's very difficult to see, I know. But um, when you uh, put a little color on top of that, you'll see the dramatic difference. And you just uh, dust a little color, and of course the image becomes apparent. So what we did with that one was dusted um, a little of this rosy pink on top here. Now if you're not uh, a fan of pink if you want to do some other color. You can make any color combination you like. You can see how um, I have this kind of little sampler here that shows um, that you can just about do anything for any taste um, for your wedding invitation. Or shower invitation would be a nice shower invitation too. I want to show one more feature about embossing that I kind of discovered by accident when I overheated some embossing powder it turned out that uh, it makes kind of an interesting um, antique finish. And I'll show you how that works. So you'll emboss it as usual, 
But then um, you might be talking to somebody across the table from you and you're not paying attention. And all of a sudden you think, oh, I went too far with my embossing. But uh, I actually liked the way it turned out. And what will happen is part of it will remain shiny, but then part of it becomes kind of this matte finish, as you can see here. If I kind of uh, move it for you, you can see the difference. Now, what I've done with this particular version is made a scrapbook page, which I want to show you. It's the same idea that we did before, except this time we made the envelope out of some scrapbook paper. We used the heart again on the cream color, but this time we used that antique technique. See how that looks? I think you could tell the difference between the shiny gold and the, and the antique gold on that one. Now, I can't leave this alone without sharing with you my um, lovely daughter, Amanda, and her boyfriend, Max. This one is kind of a card version of the scrapbook page that I made. It's just scrapbook paper that we stamped on and then layered with some more paper. Now this one, if you want to give um, a valentine to your gentleman friend, this one is a different palette, of course, and I used uh, a kind of an interesting powder that's called Rusty Nail, very masculine. So that's a good card for a uh, gentleman. And then here's finally the, the last sample that I made here, showing how you can kind of um, put them on in an interesting way. And then I like to layer the inside with the contrasting paper. Well, I hope that you um, liked what I did today. And I've shown you how to make the envelope. And I've shown you how to make the card. Now it's up to you to write just the right message for your sweetheart on the inside. And I think I need to get started with that. So let's see, roses are red. Now, how about, how do I love the, no, that's not right. I'll come up with something. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.